Um, so, do you guys remember the two postulates we talked about yesterday? Side angle, side angle, side angle. Um, probably going to need those a little bit today, but those are the two ways we know so far of proving two triangles are congruent. Okay. Um, we're adding on to this. I think I mentioned this already, but you probably forgot. But what kind of triangle is this? Isosceles. Isosceles. Um, do you remember what I, what we know about an isosceles triangle besides these two sides are equal? One side is equal. Uh, do you guys remember what these sides were called? The legs. Leg. Leg. Base. Base. Vertex angle, which is a terrible name because all, all corner points are vertices, plural of vertex. Um, but it, this is the vertex angle. Um, do you guys know what we know in an isosceles triangle? I mentioned this. If I draw a um, bisector right there, like an angle bisector, um, it splits this angle into two equal parts, and this, oh gosh, that was not a good drawing. Um, <clears throat> all right. Smart board fail. All right. So anyway, if I draw an angle bisector right there, it splits the, this angle into two equal, and then this side is congruent in both this triangle and this triangle, because it's a shared side, right? So what do I know about these two little triangles? Side angle side. Side angle side, the triangles are congruent. Therefore, uh, these two would have to be 90, but also the important part, these two angles, because the triangles are congruent, these two matching angles would have to be congruent. So that little theorem that I just went through is called the isosceles triangle theorem. In an isosceles triangle, the base angles are congruent. We talked about that last week, whenever we started this chapter, I don't remember. But um, yeah, base angles are always congruent. And also, the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem, if you have two congruent angles in a triangle, the Opposite sides are congruent. It's an isosceles triangle. So, if we know the sides are congruent in an isosceles triangle, the opposite angles are congruent. The base angles are congruent. Or if we know two angles are congruent, then the opposite sides are congruent. You guys know what I mean by opposite? If somebody like lives opposite of you, that means they live across the street. So it's like they're facing you. So this side is opposite this angle, and this angle is opposite this side. These are the base angles, these would be the congruent sides. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Okay. Say for, for chance. Triangle is equilateral only if it is equal angular. It's kind of a technically an equilateral triangle is an isosceles triangle because it does have two congruent sides. So if these two are congruent, these are equal. If these two are congruent, these two are equal. They're all equal. All right. about to get started, but catch up, I guess. Okay, you guys ready? Pumped about the opportunity. Okay, on number one, so what kind of triangle do we have over there on the right? Isosceles. So what do we know if that's an isosceles triangle?
What did we just talk about? If it's an isosceles triangle, what? Yeah, but what else do we know besides that as two equal sides? <laughs> what did we just talk about like one minute ago? I don't know, I didn't join the The base angles are congruent. Okay. Remember that? Yeah. Isosceles triangle, base angles are congruent. It's called the isosceles triangle here. So what angles must be congruent in that picture? A angle A and angle B, C, D, or B, C, A. You guys see it? Yeah. Okay, we know those two angles have to be congruent. Okay, so on number one, we're supposed to find the measurement of angle B, D, A. If B, D, C is 90. Yeah. If they make a linear pair, one of them is 90, what's the other one have to be? 90. You're going to keep using that word until he's like made everybody your enemy. Number three says find angle BCD. You guys see angle BCD? If angle A is 50. Would it be uh, 130 per chance? No. It would be 50. Okay, yeah. Basically, they just told us this angle, right here's what we're looking for. This angle is 50. We know the base angles are congruent. Yes. So they're both 50. All right, number five. We're finding the measure of angle ABD up there at the top, one of the small ones up top. If segment BD is perpendicular to AC and BCE is 125. So let me draw that in here. You gotta get rid of that 50. 125, what does perpendicular mean? These are 90 degree angles, right? And we're looking for X up here. Um, all right, if this is 125, what can I say? Um, what else do I, oh man. Uh, CD is, um, no. no? No, I was trying to move stuff. 45? Can't grab it. Oh well. Um, 55? Yes. This angle right here would have to be 55. You guys know why? Yeah, because it's a linear pair, they have to add up to 180. Uh, and I know that if this is 55, this is 55, right? Because it's isosceles triangle, the big triangle is isosceles. 90 right? plus 55. Minus right, 180 minus 90 is 90, minus 55 is 35. 35. Three angles and a triangle have to add up to 180. Number seven. Okay, find the measure of each angle indicated in the triangle. Oh, not each angle. Yeah, every angle that's missing we have to find. Okay, so on number seven, they give us angle A is 20. So how could I find angle B and angle C? What? How could I do it though? Right, what we know about angle B and C is that they are the base angles, they have to be equal. So he said you do 180 minus 20 which leaves us with 160. And since those two angles are equal, you just split 160 in half. Divide by two. So that is 80 and 80. Um, I guess I'll just say angle C equals angle B equals 80. Because 
we do have to make sure we do say every angle and just anyway. Number nine. Uh oh. How can we do number nine? Okay. How what could I use to represent angle Q? X. Do you guys see where he got that from? If angle P, yes, one of the base angles is X degrees, that means Q is X degrees. So if I have... How can I figure this out? If I have X, X, X minus 15... So X plus X plus X plus X plus right. 15 plus 180. These three have to add up to 180 because they make a triangle. So yeah, X plus X plus X minus 15. 180. What's x plus x plus x? 3x. Okay. And is that all we need to do? No. Not quite. 65 would be the two base angles. 65 would be angle Q and angle P. So I'm going to put angle Q equals angle P equals 65. Uh, what would the, the vertex angle be? 65 minus 15. 50. So angle R is 50 degrees. Or we could have done 65 plus 65 and subtracted that from 180, right? But I just plugged in 65 for x right there. Number 11, I maybe should I uh, should probably draw this if I can. <laughs> Okay, um, so we need each numbered angle. So there's an angle one up in that corner and there's an angle two down here. Um, well, Isaac, if this is a 52 degree angle, what else do I know? Uh, the other side is a 52. Right here? Uh, oh, this right here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because why? Because vertical angles. Because vertical angles. Sure. I didn't call him on you. All right. <laughs> what else do I know? Uh, Let's go, Caleb. <clears throat> How about that one? How do you have to do it? You don't have to tell me. Just how do you do it? Um, yeah. Together, these two make a straight angle. So 180 minus 52 is what is that? 128. Yeah. Okay. I don't think we really needed that 90 degree angle. So I don't know if you guys can tell, but this is kind of like number nine at this point. How can I find? Angle two down here. Well, right? Well, kind of almost. Or that's part of it. You see this uh, isosceles triangle, right? They put marks here. They also put one there. This is an isosceles triangle up here, also. You guys see it? So if I do 180 minus 52. That gives me 128. What do I do with the 128? Subtract it from. If I'm looking for the, these angles. Mm -hmm. 
divided by two. So these are base angles. So 128 divided by two is 64. So angle two is 64. So we got 128 right here. How much does that leave for these two angles? Uh, 52. Uh, yeah, 52. So does that mean angle one is 52? It's right, it's 52 divided by two. Because this and this angle are splitting those 52 degrees. Because it's another isosceles triangle. So angle one is 26 degrees. 52 divided by 2. 13. The stepping ladder. If the legs of the ladder form an isosceles triangle with the floor as the base and the exterior angle at the vertex of the ladder measure, measures 140. What do they mean? Exterior angle at the vertex of the ladder. The angle at the top. Yes. Exterior angle is the outside angle, though. So they're talking about the angle outside there, which is 140, they said. Um, what are we supposed to find all the angles? What is the measure of each base angle? So you do 40 on the top angle. Yeah, these two angles together make what? 180. 180. So this has to be 180 minus 140, so which is 140, 140. or 40, sorry. Okay, they're, they're saying that the uh, step ladder is an isosceles triangle. So these two down here have to be the same. So yeah, what's how many degrees do you have for these two? 140. 140 split in two. 70. 70. So there's just one answer on this one, 70. Uh, you guys might have forgot, but do you remember the exterior angle theorem? Mm -hmm. Exterior angle to the triangle is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles, oh, yeah. like 70 plus 70 is 140. Mm -hmm. uh, we figured it out without that, but if we would have remembered that at the beginning, we could have just said these two have to make 140, so it's 140 divided by two. But that's okay. We didn't need it. It's a little bit helpful. Okay, 15. Oh, Says yeah. we're not doing it. 14. Right, a two column proof. Uh, we're supposed to prove angle, angle, side, congruence theorem. So we don't know this yet, but angle, angle, side is another way to prove any triangles are congruent. So all we have so far is side, angle, side, and angle, side, angle, right? But on 14, they're saying angle, angle, side is a thing. And we're supposed to use that picture to prove angle, angle, side. Let's see if I can draw it really quickly. A, B, C, X, Y, Z. Okay. Do we know these triangles are congruent yet? Yeah. No. Angle, angle, side, though. No. Well, we don't know that yet. We're trying to prove it's true. So all we've got is angle, side, angle. Is this angle, side, angle? No. It's angle, angle, side. So remember yesterday, the bad word doesn't make one. Angle, angle, side is not the bad word. It, it actually does make one. We didn't learn this yesterday, but we're about to learn it right now. So, um, what's the given? Um, angle C and angle C. Are okay, angle C 
is here at angle Z. So we're just getting this from the picture that they drew, basically. Uh, what else? Um, line AB is congruent to line AB. Okay, segment AB congruent to segment XY. There's one other thing they gave us. Angle A is congruent to angle X. Reason? Uh, I probably should have put the headings in there. So this is the reason. Darn it. Oops. These are the statements. All right. Now we've used this trick, this is a really short proof by the way. We've used this trick twice already. Um, if these two angles on this left triangle are congruent to these two angles on the right triangle, what else do I know about the two triangles? Oh, that one has to be, yes, you can it to X, yeah, or Y. Y. W H Y Y. Angle B is congruent to angle Y. Why do we know that? How do we know that? You guys remember using this one? If two pairs of angles are congruent two triangles and the third pair is congruent. So we're already ready to say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XYZ by angle side angle. Okay, what have we just proven? What we've just proven is angle angle side. So we're going to add that to our list of ways to prove triangles are congruent. That is a theorem because we you can prove it. We used angle side angle postulate. Postulates are not proven to help us get there, but yeah. Now we can use angle angle side. So our list is now side angle side, angle side angle, and angle angle side. And that's not an exhaustive list. There's actually more. Um, what else we got? 18, 18. Okay. Find the measure of all the numbers. Lots of answers. I see one, two, three, and four on this one. I really don't want to draw this. Take a long time. But that might be the best way to understand. X, Y, Z, B, A. What else we got? Do you guys have an angle five in your book? Angle 2, angle 3, angle 4, and these two. Okay, I think I'm 
marked everything, didn't I? No. All right. Well, they only gave us one angle out here. 111. That's all we need. So, do you like that one thing where they add 180? So you get on X, right? I'm down by the X. Angles add 180. Yeah, all three of these add up to 180, yes. Is that what you're talking about? Uh -huh. But is that going to help us? Oh, this is a tricky one, I just realized. Harder than I thought it was. Um, well, if this is angle three, then this would be worth angle three also, right? I'm gonna put three right there. Okay. Yeah, this is harder than I thought it'd be. This 111 is, this exterior angle is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. So in other words, angle one plus angle three. Come on, what the heck? Equals 111. Now, is that enough information to solve? No, it's not. Okay. This one? No. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's not mine either. How did I know this is worth angle one? Yeah, yeah, well, they just, yeah, it is isosceles, but they gave us, or did they not mark that in your book? They didn't. Okay, this is, a, okay, they didn't, I don't know what's going on. These two are congruent, therefore, these two angles are congruent. So they are, they are both angle, worth angle one. Um, gosh, I feel like there, uh, there should be an easier way to do this, but I can't see it. Well, I know angle one plus angle four plus 111. See where I got that? 180 minus angle four yeah. would equal these two angles. Yeah, some more than I wanted for sure. Um, let's do. Do you guys remember substitution? change. Gosh, there's got to be an easier. Let's see if the book puts... No. Hold on. I don't know the book. Yeah. They're doing it the same way I am, basically. Uh, well, let me look at 18. See if it's any harder than that? Yeah, 
Yeah, those top two are 100. Uh, yeah, that's, that's easier. Okay, well, let's, um, let's just go ahead and finish this one. You guys remember, we're going to do substitution next year, so might as well remind you a little bit. I forgot my angle somewhere right there. Okay, uh, I used this equation to figure out that angle 4 is equal to 180 minus 2, so 2 times angle 3. So that means I can replace this with that. You guys remember doing this last year? Hopefully, because you're going to see it again next year. first equation that I wrote. I get angle 1 is equal to 111 minus angle 3. And I finally get a solvable equation. Okay, do you guys see what I've done here? Why can I solve this? I replaced angle four with a version of angle three. I replaced angle one with something with angle three. I've got one variable. Angle three is a variable. You can solve a one variable equation. Maybe I should call it X or something or whatever, A. Um, If you're adding parentheses, you don't really need the parentheses here. Uh, if so, if I can subtract 180 on both sides, those go away. Uh, what's 111 plus 111? 222. What's minus 1 angle 3 minus 2 angle 3? Last year, I just didn't remember how tough it was. So if you divide by angle negative 3, you get angle 3 equals 74. What's a mess? Okay, actually that was the hard part though. <laughs> After this it gets a lot easier. They should have given us one more angle. Okay, so I figured out angle three is 74. You guys can help me or not. Um, cadence, if angle three is 74, what else can I figure out? These two add up to 180. So 180 minus 74 is 3 is 74. So that's 74. So what? We're looking for this one down here. Well, what do we have here? We got three angles in the triangle, right? So what do I know about the three angles in the triangle? 74 plus 74. 180 minus that. 
Yeah, yeah. 74 plus 74 is 148. 180 minus 148 is uh, 32. 32. Okay. Uh, Kyle, how can we find angle 1? We know that this angle is 106. Any ideas how we can find angle 1? Well, what do I know about... Both of these are the same angle, so they're both angle 1. What do I know about all three of these angles together? This one plus this one plus this one equals what? When it, they make a triangle, right? They're inside this triangle. So they have to add up to 180. So if I do 180 minus 106, which is 74 again, that means these two angles together are 74. So how do I find just one of them? Yeah, they're the same, so you just divide that in half. Divide by 2. Uh, so what's 74 divided by 2? That's a doozy. Um, we might stop there. I guess if you guys get 18. 18 is much easier than that one. Well, the first step is much easier. So if you guys figure it out, I'll give you a couple bonus points. But no, we'll stop there. That's